Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Noble Vlogs. Today we are going to be getting some hay samples from our third cutting hay. We're only going to get, let's say, four samples. Four. And we got the probe, some bags, some post notes. That's really all you need in a drill to get these uh, samples. We got three sets of rounds and one set of squares. The squares from the last video, we got to prop those. Right now we are going over to help load up a cultivator for my dad's uncle. Um, he sold the cultivator, he just needs some help. And then once we get done with that, we're gonna get uh, one hay sample since we're already gonna be over in that field. Uh, what all is on the hay sample, I guess? Um, the RFV and relative feed value. Enjoy today's video and stay tuned. get it all chained up and I'm heading over to field because this thing is really slow. down eight to go so we tested about nine round bales that way we get a good uh, good test for the entire field and this will we end up with and we will put it in this bag along with a sticky note with uh, dad's email information uh, the sample ID uh, sample ID is basically field name and then what cutting it is Ah uh, yes, that's a that's a nice bag of wheat. I mean, I mean, hey, got our second sample done. Now we are up at our squares. He doesn't want to do them. 
but these ones we don't have the privilege of using gravity as our friend we gotta go straight into them with sheer force We're back home. We actually didn't uh, probe any more of the squares just because we thought that maybe it hasn't gone through a sweat yet. Which, what exactly is a sweat? Just, like just coming out of the hay. If you guys didn't hear that, it's internal moisture from the hay. And it's just coming out of it. All bales, when they uh, when they get built up, they do that. And so we're gonna let it sit for a week and. Let it do its sweat. We got the other three samples done, and we will go ahead and send those to the to the lab, get those tested, and so that way we can get them shipped out to either ranches or feedlot. So it's been a couple days since we got the test results down to the lab now, um, and they sent us an email with the three test samples that we sent them, and we just print them off. That way we can make as many copies as we have to and we can get sent to the feedlots and then they can we can price it accordingly with them I folded it in half just so then we got some personal information on there that we don't want you guys seeing uh, like we have our address on there the uh, labs address is on there as well and so not quite sure if we should show that on video so just for sake's sake uh, I folded it in half but this is what it all entails the left column the left column is what it was at when received and the right column is at dry matter dry matter is basically they put the sample inside of an oven overnight and get all the moisture out of the uh, sample as you can see here moisture when received was 15.4 percent dry matter is 84.6 percent dry matter is just basically what it is minus the moisture we start off here protein is 19.5 uh, percent that's a uh, that's pretty good we liked seeing it over 20 uh, this is the first sample that we got so this was the uh, this is the field that James and I were sharecropping but um you mainly want to look at the right column the dry matter that's what's most crucial but like I said 19.5 crude protein the TDN here, the TDN is 57.9. That you would like to see around 60-ish. Um, and then the RFV relative feed value was 128. A good RFV is probably anywhere between 150 to 175. And a really excellent RFV is 175 to 200 and then like Beyond that, that's extremely good hay. Here at the bottom, you see all the um, the minerals that you see. So that's the percentage. And then dry matter, 1% calcium. Phosphorus was 0.32%. That I'm not entirely sure uh, how much you want. Because basically, like I've said before, we mainly want to focus on the protein percent and the TDN, total digestible nutrients and the RFV. Those are the main uh, three numbers that we look at in our test samples to then price our hay accordingly. I wouldn't say I'm happy about it. I mean, I'm always, I always like seeing the numbers a lot higher, but I'm in the past, I have seen that the RFV is below 100. And so that was pretty poorly hay. Um, some things that we probably could did different putting up the hay was we could put it up at night when the hay was still a little bit tough. I know when baling probably we bailed it up too dry and we powered the leaves didn't get a whole lot of nutrients out of the leaves because we powered them um, maybe with the humidity it bleached a little bit I, that might take some of the nutrients out um, I don't know maybe with if there's gopher mounds and it kicks a bunch of sand into the hay I'm not sure if that plays any big role into it all in all it's not horrible but it's not perfect either um, 
but what can you do you just gotta you gotta like you always say you roll with the punches you deal with the hand you're dealt and go back next cutting and try and try and do better so but that's gonna do it for this episode guys i hope you enjoyed today's video uh i hope you guys learned something um like and subscribe like always comment down below what you guys liked about the video what you want to see um coming up next uh, i know fourth cutting we're gonna be starting on that here soon the last cutting for the year is upon us basically the hay uh it's getting pretty well mature and so it's gonna need cut for the fourth time um we're gonna be getting ready for dry land beans i mean this past week it's been it's been plenty dry and not so much humid either so that some of our dry land beans they started turning really hard like i said i hope you guys enjoyed today's video stay tuned for more to come see ya